Hey now, it's July 22nd. It's Friday, 2012. We're here live at the corner of Fourth and Town at Occupy Skid Row. Um, today, um, the people here moved their belongings and uh, the street was power washed with hot water and bleach. And uh, all right, did you hear that? Uh, she said, get people back here. Get people out here. The police are probably going to come back. Um, I just had all my old contacts. My phone's in the contract. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I used to make one phone call and have like a hundred people from all over the place. We need that. We need that number. <laughs> I mean, like a lot of numbers are out there. Yeah. People who, did, who made the, who created the treehouse over at City Hall. The, uh, a lot of the, the movie makers, the editors, all the important people. I'm important. Yeah, I, was, I was getting out of jail with, you know, a lot of people. Like yeah. Hey, Julie. the word, we got a report that the scribe marker was exactly the sledgehammer and trying to break into something. And I have the truth in the I heard the sledgehammer thing too. That's not that thing. Daddy, turn off All right. I'm going to hit mute on someone's request. Me to be a we went to get some food. What is, she doesn't understand about what? No, she, her, she speaks English, uh -huh. but her show is in Spanish. Yeah. So, you know, it would be an interview in Spanish, and she'd like to talk to me about my experience and you know and why you know I'm so concerned about what's going on here. Uh -huh. and that kind of thing. And I think that could be a good thing. Yeah. Well, you're a good person uh, to talk to because you're articulate and you know what's going on. I told her I'm a social worker. I used to run. I used to be the executive director of Coalition for Community Health, which is a health promoter organization in central Los Angeles. Um, I'm rolling and, uh, Keep telling me that. Um, we had a lot of homeless families, and you know, so we got involved with um, uh, Homeless Health Care LA, and through them I got to know LA Ken, I got to know Peter and Becky and all of them, and Bilal. Oh, quite And um, Thank you for coming, but you know so what? Always, We're going to you know, have to start doing shifts. Like, yeah. you know, if we could do shifts, that would be a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, working shifts and but, come back and, you know, and, and experiencing and this get, firsthand yeah. is a whole other story. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll yeah. catch up with you there. Yeah. I have a feeling she got a no. Oh well. Yeah, but um. Jewelry. Yeah, it, it feels yeah, like uh, the, 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 the police are enforcing laws that yeah, judges exactly. have overturned. So yes, or I laws that don't exist, like chalking. Yeah. So um, all of this is, it's, it's all about intimidation uh, because there's no real reason to be um, arresting people here. This is just to make people scared. Totally. Well, all I can say is if there's anybody listening to this stream that happens to be a lawyer or happens to be interested in such things, that it would be great. I mean, there are so many class action suits that could be made here. We could have a lot of fun with those. Yeah. I come from gang culture, so I never understood those nicknames and, and shit. Smokey usually means a crackhead. Brillo pad and fucking TV antenna. They talking about fucking. I actually kind of have this sick, like, fun feeling when the cops are face to face with me, threatening me, and I'm not scared. Sorry. Uh, I, it's like this high feeling uh, that I get right. from not being afraid of them, and it's like, and it's like because you're bigger than yourself. And it's when that cop was as close to me yeah. as you are to me, and she's got her hands almost to, to touching me, and I'm telling her, "Do not touch me," yeah. and she's saying, "Well, then you better move." Well, I am moving actually. Right. Do not touch me, and I'm filming her. Right. So if she did touch me, you know, there's no reason for her to be touching me. Absolutely, absolutely, and I know that feeling. I've had that same sort of almost exhilarated feeling when the police shoved me against the, the gate at, uh -huh. you know, at Rimpau Boulevard. And, you know, I just said, I just turned like, I, I said, 
what are what am I being arrested for? And they're like, trespassing. And I'm like, but I just got here and my friends are being arrested against the wall. And they're like, well, were you in the lawn? I'm like, no, there's my car. I just came out of my car. And they're like, well, get away, you know. And then so I was able to document for the other people. But you know, I, I had that same feeling, you know, that yeah. feeling of like this is bigger than me. Uh huh. Yeah. So there was no reason to feel personally afraid. Of course it's bigger than you. This has been happening for 80 freaking years. Yeah. More than 80 years. What Probably through about? the history of the world. What are we talking about? What's going on? Fighting back against oppressors. So we have okay, to. So we're going to to do, um, to interview you, and then we've got to go. Okay. All right. Fine. Awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna record it. So this is uh, Channel 22. <laughs> En las últimas días han mandado noticias a las dos, uh, diez uh, mil uh, personas que no tienen hogar, que están quedando aquí en el lado de, de, de la calle, en Skid Row, el área designado por ley legal um, federal para ellos, porque no tienen otro lugar. Están quedando allá hace mucho tiempo. Ahora que noticia de la policía diciendo que van a limpiar la, el, la calle y tienen que mudar todas sus cosas. Bueno, lo que pasa, después que se limpia, no les dejan entrar de nuevo. No lo permitan regresar a su hogar, su lugar, su, su cartita o su... Muchas veces también se toman sus cosas personales, lo poco que tienen, un lugar para quedarse caliente en la noche, ¿no? Tengo entendido el departamento de policía dice que puede confiscar la propiedad que esté abandonada. Sí. ¿Eso fue lo que pasó? Eso fue que ellos dicen, dijeron, pero no es la verdad. Legalmente ellos no tienen derecho ni no tienen derecho ni de la ni del estado, ni del condado, ni la ciudad para tomar las cosas personales de alguien que está con sus cosas, las cosas en rueda. Sí estaban en moción, no tienen derecho de sacar la cosa así, no. Y tampoco es una cosa humana, es una cosa que todos nosotros tenemos que ver, pensar. Mira, estos son gente que no tienen todo, bueno, no tienen buen, uh, ¿cómo se dice? La, no, suerte en su vida en este momento. Y hay más y más por la economía. Puede ser que nosotros también estamos dos o tres you know, um, semanas de, de pago, de trabajo, de, de estar en la misma situación. Me decía también que están preocupados que no estén limpiando las calles adecuadamente. Sí, eso es una mentira. Lo que pasa es que una tercera de la población de Skid Row, el área designada, ya han sacado del área. La policía ya han sacado del área y no sé para dónde. Dice que hay unos bloques, unos lugares donde se pueden poner sus cosas y no sé, la gente no quiere dejar cosas con la policía que toman la cosa y entonces la gente no sé dónde están, están caminando porque es una necesidad hay mucha gente aquí, nadie debo decir muchas gracias para 
escuchando eso, porque en realidad es importante que las personas humanas realicen que estamos haciendo eso, ¿no? Para cooperaciones que quiere crecer, a construir un estadio nuevo. Entonces, ve un prófito. Yo ve que aquí hay un prófito. Entonces, quieren cambiar la casa de aquí, la zona de la casa de residencial a comercial y hacer todo para el estadio. Pero tienen que pensar también en la gente que está aquí en esta calle. Esta no es una solución. Una solución es un plan. Una cama, un poco de comer, un trabajo. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for being here. Huh? Uh, she's she's done a lot of work in our movement. She's another person of real conscience. This is Patty. Yeah, yeah I was uh, facing off with the police earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so are you documenting any of it online? Yeah, I'm actually live streaming now. Uh, so we have right now 25 viewers that we know of, and sometimes wow. other streams pick it up. So. Um, sometimes people all around the world will be watching. Um, this morning we what had, it? it's uh, PM beers. Um, it's the letter P and M, like at night, and then beers like uh, six pack, and it's all one word. Okay. On YouTube? At uh, Ustream. Okay. And I'm also on YouTube as, as well, but um, this, if you want to see me live, I'm on Ustream. That's very cool. And I've been here since 6 a.m. this morning. So you've watched absolutely everything happen. Yeah. I, yeah, I've been here all day. Yeah. I thought it was going to happen at 6 a.m. and then they told me, oh no, it's going to happen at 8. Shoot, no, it happened around 7. Nate showed up around 7 o'clock. They had the whole first day came in with the front end loader. I was over there. It's like, hey, convoy coming! That was eight o'clock. Yeah, I remember you were at the <laughs> corner, but yeah. The convoy's coming. You're like you were, the, you were the lookout guy. <laughs> like, the red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. I was sitting there watching them as they were getting all their stuff and you know moving in back and forth. And all yeah, that was cool. Like, shoot, there's a the dumb truck. <laughs> no, I hope that we are helping. I really do. I and I hope there's more that we can. Thought you was going. Keep recording. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for all your All right. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Expose on the CCA. Is there a phone number where you can be reached? Yeah. Yeah, sure. David Gibbons. I'm going to get you. What is your name? I'm one of the uh, members of the legal committee for Octopus. I'm going to walk away. You want to give a, a recap, Adam? A recap. Yeah, just for people who just kind of tune in right now. Uh, we are sitting at Fulton Town Avenue in the Central City East community, more commonly known as Skid Row. Uh, what happened this morning is uh, the county came into power, Washington and announced this ahead of time. Uh, everybody was happy to see the county because the CCEA has this contract and they don't clean this street. They don't power wash this street with hot water, they power wash it with cold water and help spread disease. So we were happy to see uh, hot water and bleach being used to actually clean germs off our streets. The people want their streets clean. So the people picked up their belongings, went across the street to third, uh, sat down, waited with the belongings for the cleaning up to be done after the cleanup was to be done. We came back over here and we're surrounded by, what would you say, Patty, like 25 days? I would say it was the number was lower. Yeah, a little lower than that. I think there were about 10 actual cops and maybe four to six red shirts. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 okay. Well, they, they count as big. You know, not really. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was red shirts, but the, the, whole, the whole point is that the police came at us trying to enforce a, uh, a city ordinance. <laughs> Uh, that says that you can't leave abandoned property on the ground. Good city ordinance. The only problem was we weren't leaving abandoned property on the ground. All the property was claimed. We said that's our property. So the police tried to interpret that and, and, and twist in that old 4118 D thing that they got having an injunction against also. That you have to keep moving with your property. So, 
They, your property has to be mobile, basically, all right? Now, all this property is in shopping carts. You know, when we had it up, everything was in shopping carts. Everything was mobile and good to go, all right? There's a federal injunction against the LAPD seizing people's property. So what they're trying to do is end run around that by saying the property is abandoned. I mean, obviously it's not. I mean, we have proof on tape. What they're really trying to do is flex muscle because... Let's face it, we're speaking out against their pain masters. I, 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 what I see today is intimidation. It's, it's all intimidation. Everything I've seen today is intimidation. Well, and th this is what they did on Gladys. This is what they did over on Crocker. Uh -huh. You know, they, they cleared the people out. You go to them, the people that were there are not there. Thing so is, that, this, this, they, they, they're, they're doing what the Safer Cities Initiative was designed to do. They're trying I don't to know. I don't see anyone here who's afraid. No, of course we're not afraid because we do this. You know, we, this, we are not, I mean, of course, there's residents of Skid Row, residents of Skid Row, a lot of us, but a former residents. But we do this. We go against the police all the time. But you also got to think you got to put a politely business going on down here. You have a lot of addiction. You have a lot of mental illness. All right. So if somebody comes at you and you're doing business, or you have an addiction, or you have a mental illness, are you prepared to? push back and stand your ground for the space that you've been living in for years? No. So once they clear those streets, those people don't come back. We are we are trying, and that, that's what LA can, and that's what Occupy the Hood and Occupy Skid Row are trying to do in Skid Row. We're trying to develop a culture of resistance. Because if we don't develop a culture of resistance, a 60-year-old neighborhood will be gone. And this is a neighborhood. This is not just homeless people. Ask Brother Belial. Say, 30 years ago, this it's was like, not the skid row you see today. You know how you got there wasn't a shitload of homeless people. Focus, it's, this is communities. There was affordable housing all over downtown. That's what downtown Los Angeles was. Affordable housing. And as the condo boom came back in, all of those units were destroyed and not replaced. So basically, they just destroyed units of housing and kicked people out of the streets. And this is a CCA policy. I mean, they did the same thing with public housing. Okay, you cover public housing like... This, this is the deal they always get. <laughs> and I'll use the example of Cabrini Green. No, that's one that I'm familiar with in Chicago. Okay, I think Cabrini I heard about that. They say, we're going to tear down these towers, these dilapidated towers. And the reason they're dilapidated, mind you, is not that public housing did not work. It's that they stopped funding public housing for the last almost 36 years. So they stopped maintaining the... They stopped maintaining the buildings. Okay. They, sta they, stopped, they stopped maintaining the training programs. They stopped maintaining the yard. They stopped maintaining everything. <laughs> they stopped maintaining the safety. <laughs> so, you know? And what happened is, all these empty buildings around. All right, because I know that you don't you don't really like to get into the issue of race, but it is a race issue on this point when you're talking about public housing and affordable housing. And, and I'll tell you what, it's it's not because of of, of any assigned guilt on anybody who's probably watching now, except you know there's police watching, and it's probably not even their fault really anyway. I mean, look, it's a race problem that, that does stem back over 130 years. I mean, it, look, I, I'm just going to say this, and, then, and I swear I'll stop talking about it. America, if it would have been honest about slavery, it said that we were stronger than you, and that's why we took you. Racism would have ended with slavery ended. But instead, they pushed this idea that's even in our Constitution that a human being is three-fifths of a man, can be treated as cattle. This is a corrosive idea in the American psyche. But that's a whole different thing, but I'm telling you that's how it is a race issue, because this keeps people poor. Whereas we can, everybody loves to cry, you know, there's, there's no victims, you just gotta get up and do something. That's not true. There are plenty of victims, and you're one of them. You just have to realize that you're being victimized. The system is set up to victimize them. It buys you. It's set up to draw your money, to draw your work, to draw your life out, to serve other people's needs. That's what it is. And not your needs or your community's needs, but people that you'll never meet in your life. People that you only hear about on TV if you hear about them. And that, that's the way that America is set up. And that's not saying that, you know, all the positive, there's very po many positive things about America, but that is the basis of the system. And we can say capitalist, and it, it, it is a capitalist system, but I think on that level, it, I mean, of course, it, it, look, racism is a justification for capitalism. 
they had to justify the slave trade to, them, to themselves in order to do it. But any, anyway, that, that's a whole different issue. But, I mean, but it's not because it it, it, it it really is. Like you look at the prisons, the concentration camps, and that's why we say that. I didn't make that up. That's old language. You know, that's very old language. And, and it is offensive uh, because of what Hitler did with concentration camps in World War II and, you know, what Ataturk did to, to the Armenians and all that. But we forget that there's been six genocides in the last 10 years that you don't know about. And that's not saying that it's any less horrible. That's saying that those people were black. So let, let, let's be honest with each other. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a blame game. It's, let's just be honest with each other. That this right here is racial genocide that we're seeing this difficult. And it, it, it's, it's, it's not just not only a symptom, it's a function of it. It's a tactic of it. You're seeing it unfold right in front of you. And the fact that it is allowed to go on while you're seeing it unfold right in front of you proves that you are not free. It proves that you yourself are a slave. You just don't know it. You're just a house slave as opposed to a field slave. <laughs> and that's the truth. Um, and and that, that's what's happening, man. That's the update. I, yeah. Like, like that for real. Well, I, I don't know. That, that, that was a whole lot well, of Well, I'm a house slave for now. We'll see. Like, yeah. I we'll mean, see if that, I can maintain my position. We'll see. I, I, it, we we got to stand and look. And, and people want to get past race by being post-racial. That's my big problem with like RCP and most of the communist stuff. Is, is they all leave out the what's race that? factor. Like most communist organizations, they do that. They leave out the race factor. Like it's not important. It's very fucking important. Because it is the basis of our interaction with each other. Yeah. It, 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 and, it, and that's that's just the way we've been programmed. Yeah. And it's not even just the way we've been programmed because it plays on very basic. I'm so I would go off. Well, I I I'll tell you honestly, I have the privilege of, of being raised without that kind of consciousness of race, of being raised with parents who didn't uh, treat people differently. Uh, based on race and and had friends of every race and that's, and that, that's saying, not that, my and, experience. And so. That's beautiful. But yeah, you were raised that way. No, but that I'm telling you that, that I'm admitting that I'm privileged yeah. to not know what racial no, it's, issues it's are. To, and, 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 I, and I'm very like. There's nothing to apologize I'm very, for. Um, blessed for that. I am privileged to not know what racism is because that's not what I was taught. <laughs> Man, you're blessed. Yeah. Oh shit! All right, did you got? No. Oh, okay. But no. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, because my, my parents were poor, uh, so they, they they just never thought that they were better than anybody else. And uh, let me let me show you actually a microcosm of it. Even though there are going to be a lot of people right now that I'm going to point out that say they're aren't racist. Uh -huh. I want you to look right here. Uh huh. It's right here. No, no. I want you to look over there. They've separated an themselves. Or, 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 uh huh. Uh, they probably don't know. Uh, uh, everybody's over there. Why are they over there? Why is Occupy over there? Is that right here? I think they want to smoke weed. Oh, that's yeah. just not <laughs> But I don't know. Like, I'm looking over there and, and I'm. I think that's the answer. I'm not seeing, like, I'm not seeing, or I'm seeing, like, different races, though. It's like, it's. No, no, there's a lot of. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's another. I think they just—they're just comfortable with each other. Well, I mean, look, look, it's natural to get defensive when somebody says that something you say is racist, or when when to even think that you may have that, or, or anyone that you love. Like, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a basic thing. That doesn't make people bad people because they they think the way the society is programmed them to. I mean, I know they like to say it takes a couple of generations. In my mind, it takes one generation to be raised under a system in order for that system to be raised. To be what? To be raised under a system, not only a system of government, but a system of thought. Yeah. For that to be well, normal. actually, actually, my, my grandmother is racist. And that was a big... Uh, my grandmother's racist. I found that out when I was like eight years old. And I was shocked. She was like, she was like, why is that black man selling pudding to children on television? I can't believe it. And I'm like, that's Bill Cosby, Grandma. Was, yeah, it's like a that's, he's the sweet man. Wait, man. what's wrong with him? I like Bill Cosby. Like, or maybe I, I, I was older. I don't know. There's nothing wrong but, with your grandma being racist because she's old. That's that's the system she was raised. Yeah. Like, 
You know, uh, my parents were raised under the system in the 60s where it was a mix. But let's be honest, the 60s wasn't some magical ass ever. 60s was just like right now. And that, that's why, like, if you see me bust on people, if I say, that's some liberal fuck shit, that's not an insult to the person. I say that because liberal is the most disgusting term in the world. Because, because it, it, it seems like a cop out. Like, I, I'm not even going to give so specific like, examples because I don't want to rag on nobody. There, Everybody's like trying to do their best. Like Real shit. Don't pay at but, all, you know, look, I'm going to say it like When liberals got what they want, and this is not just white liberals, this is black liberals, brown liberals. When liberals got what they wanted out of the 60s, which was basically something better for them. They split. And to be honest, that migration into... I don't even want to say electoral politics, because electoral politics is important. Panthers bring to that as well. But into uh, the democratic machine. And, and that, that, that form of thought left the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Capital, like George Wallace, big white cock, you know, Democrat. Like the reason Stokely Carmichael founded the Black Panther Party, Democrat. You know, they're, but they're, but I'm just saying, but their ascension into that has, has actually led to some positive things for the Democratic Party. The only problem is it let the Panthers out to be, out to be murdered by themselves. And, and groups like them. I mean, by the FBI, by the government. And it, I mean, this is just not some conspiracy theory. There's documents that are released. I mean, it's, it, they publish books about this shit. So if, if anybody's out there is thinking it, and I know people still think this is good, look it up. Go read a book in your public library. Go read the Cointel profile. These, these aren't written by, by and often these are written by FBI. Read them. You know, read them about the IWW. Read them about the Panthers. Read them about Dr. King and Malcolm X. It, 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 it's it's disgusting, and I'm not gonna go into all that shit because y'all probably know that anyway. And if you don't go read, so what are these like? Like, like um, Cointel files? Cointel Pro. Okay. Now Cointel, it was a counterintelligence program developed by J. Edgar Hoover. He really got the go. So ahead. um, yeah, yeah, okay. Is there is there a file on you and me? Um, I, well look. Under Special Order 1 here in Los Angeles, there's a file on you for sure because they can open a, secure, a national security investigation for you filming, for you doing non-criminal acts, for you filming right now, for you snapping a picture, for you making a drawing, for you walking into a business and asking what time it closes, they can open what's called a SARS report on you. And this SARS report must be reported to national security. And the biggest national security data center in California is, I mean, is here in Norwalk, California, in the country. The biggest one. So yeah, undoubtedly, everyone probably on Skid Row has some sort of SARS filed on them, especially in the Occupy movement. I, I did. Um, I did admit on live stream that when I was a child, I did some chalking. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Our president did cocaine. Okay. And like our last two presidents, I remember like, like at least people did talk about it. I, you know, I did some hopscotch and rainbows, and uh, I don't know. See, that just gateway. It's a gateway to political switch chalking. Yeah. But in the past 10 years, I have not chalked. Hey, we're going to give you some chalk. Go write a big fuck the police on the side. Yeah, I have not chalked in the past 10 years. So I'm not a hardened criminal yet. I see those meetings are working for you right now. The meetings? Are they chalk anonymous? Yeah. Somebody earlier was asking if this is chalky pie. Hey, hey, hey. You know what? It's fun, though. Chalking is dope. Like, it really is. It's hard. It sucks to go to jail for it, but they just don't like werewolves. I shit you not. Like they, they, they was looking to take werewolves. We were here the I was here the other day, they took him the other day. Yeah, they, right they, they, we were getting ready to get on the bus to go to El Segundo and uh talk so much shit. That, and that's why he Uh-huh, that's why he goes out of his way to piss. Once they get him on bars, he gets his ass whooped. They tend to have their favorites, I've noticed that. Yeah. Their favorites. Yeah, they do. I've noticed that. They do. They love to fuck werewolves. I think one of the favorites got arrested last night, too. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We won't mention names on that one. We've seen werewolves last night. Um, yeah, but we all know who that favorite is who got yeah. arrested last night. I mean, it, 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 that's, that's a favorite. And, and what they're trying to do is target leaders, and it confuses them. Because we do have great leaders in Occupy. And they know leaders yeah, but the one last night really hasn't been acting like a leader in quite a long time. So Exactly, but it, it's, it. it's a spiritual thing. That's what I'm saying. It's not an act. It, 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 he empowers people to be leaders. That's what's beautiful about Occupy. We empower each other to be leaders. I haven't even seen him in a while. 
you got to remember, even even in other anarcho collectives, somebody always figures it out. That's just the most expressive, the most charismatic. My lucky number is that you know in China, that's not necessarily a bad thing to have somebody. Not at all. It looks like a symbol or a symbol which means luck. Sometimes people call those fortuners, but when you don't know what to do, so they're symbols. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's well, as long as we're all cool with it, that's fine. And that, 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 that's what I consider a leader. Like, hey, you may plan for an action. But I think all of us are leaders in our own way. Exactly. And I think it's good to not have a leader to give everyone that responsibility that, you know, we need to step up sometimes and, and take some, well, I like, some I like initiative. Well, I like our be our leader. I like that. I mean, because Occupy LA's kind of, we, we stopped all those silly arguments. We had, I mean, it's like we've been deprogrammed. Even like the, the anarchists, the communists didn't come in and deprogram everybody, you know? And, and the, I think we were discussing it earlier that, that um, like, all, all our in, a lot of our infighting is, is done. We don't all like each other. We don't all get along. But I think yeah, exactly. we're, I think we're, 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 yeah, exactly, yeah. You just left City Hall, so I know you was like, yeah, but people need to understand that this, that this right, this is, this is serious. This, this isn't our time anymore. This is real serious. This is some cold shit. This is this is this is some really snaky cold shit. Yeah. And they're really serious about building this football stadium. They're really serious about moving Skid Row out and gentrifying this entire area. They are really doing it. This is not something that can be fought with dollars. I mean, you can toss in some dollars, but if you toss in those dollars, you need to toss them in the right way. And now we're not talking to a poverty pimp organization. I know some people don't like that word, but it's a fact. When your business is poverty, you tend not to want to cure that. Awesome. Put it into an organization that's going to fight the CCNA and tear it apart. And what that means is you have to do in-depth investigations. You have to do IRS audits. You have to do criminal probes. Those are the only ways you're actually going to stop things like that. And that's why you need to donate to Occupy. We need to get our research committee going, and among other things, it's not good. We could use a bail fund as well. Yeah, we could definitely use a bail, but honestly, we know what we we came out here to take our lumps for the people. If you're out here facing, you are in a dangerous situation. You're in a war zone. And that, I think that that's going to send people away, but that's going to bring good people to us as well. Yeah. You're you're in a war zone when you come out here. You have to I mean, if you get arrested But I mean, I think I, we still need a bail fund. I mean, there funds. there are people, you know, who don't intend to get arrested who might be elderly or might have kids I, I, that's, or, that's what i'm saying but if you're standing on a battlefield patty you might get shot even if you just take a picture yeah i mean and, and that's yeah, really where we're at people occupy, need to realize that's where we're at mentally i mean not us we want to chill i wish we were at that point mentally the police are at that point but not just the police the cc he said there was last time the first time i went in like watch you know our 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 city council our mayor they have a plan they want the city of the future and that city of the future is going to be some gaudy shit like vegas well you know there's a lot of people there's a lot more people out there uh who who support what we're doing who won't, won't come out here who can back us up with a few dollars here and there now and then and they can also back us up with conversation yeah absolutely that's the only way that we can't do this shit. we are not Jesus or Superman or Muhammad or, or or Vishnu or fucking Rama or anybody you got. We can struggle with you. We can't struggle for you. You need to do that. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends. Talk to people. Not about Occupy or any of this shit. What's wrong? What's wrong in your fucking community? Get out there and do something about it. You could take a day to go out and feed the hungry. You could take a day to go out and clean up the park and take a rake. Hey, man! You know? You, also, but, uh, this is that type of thing. I mean, and this, you get a group of people talking, but we, we got bigger things than that right now. People are thinking on that level. But those of us who are who are out here, like, face-to-face -face with the cops or are actually, like, taking these actions, we're not more special than anybody else. Hell no. There's absolutely fact, nothing more special about me than anybody. the dregs of society? Pan, pan the camera around. Pan the camera around. Pan. Well, I can't pan it to her. Okay. We are the dregs of society. We're the people that, and, 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 and the evil, many would consider the dregs of society. We are the poor, most of us. This is a militant poor people's movement, and if you're not poor, you will be. There's 150 million people in this country that live below or at the poverty level. 
at means you lost hey, your Joe, job. Joe. Oh, fuck. I'm broke. Joe, Joe. I mean, 150 million. You can, stand you can have a job and be at the poverty level, though. Exactly. Exactly. Like you, you, and that's why the jobs are designed. Yet again, your system is designed to use you and suck your work and your time and your life. Not to enrich you with your work. And not to enrich your community yeah, yeah. with your work. You don't enrich your community by working at McDonald's. Um, McDonald's is poisonous. It kills people. Yeah. Sure. And I eat it every day and I'm saying this. But this is what poor people can afford to eat. You don't, I mean, it, it, this is a really a health crisis. Housing is a health crisis. Food is a health crisis. Clothing is a health crisis. Really, jobs are a health crisis. And we have a health crisis in this country. And what the fuck is our president doing? Giving the presidential medal of freedom to George Bush Sr. for extolling American values of life. Direct quote. Extolling American values, Mr. Air America, Mr. Crack Cocaine. Proven fact, yet again, on record, not a joke, on record and government documents, cocaine dealer. Who's a cocaine dealer? George Bush Sr. Wow. George Bush Sr.'s father was a fucking... Exactly. Prescott Bush founded, I mean, he funded the Nazi party during the war. Not before the war, like all the other fucking pigs did. During the war, this is a traitorous fuck. Are you fucking serious right now? And and Obama, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, I want I want my brothers and sisters to listen. My brothers and sisters of color to listen. I understand that you think that some of you think that this is a beautiful thing, and it is a beautiful thing to have a black president. But this man is not. Your brother. You know what Locus is? Huh? He's one of them. Locus. Locus. And I, I worked at his campaign. Yeah, I'm very disappointed. And I'm sorry with the birth certificate shit, y'all can keep that. That's some bullshit. I'm telling you, he's a bad president. I'm telling you, I, I seen some work go, and it seems like he shifted his. I think I think that's the hardest thing for people to get. Like if I tell them, you know, um, Obama is just as bad as Bush. They're equally evil. People don't get that. They don't get that. Yeah. That's why. Huh? This shit been going on. Exactly. But because it's Obama, and I don't give a fuck about Obama. That's what I'm saying. You can't blame him because he's a nigga. But, 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 that's what I get. Ronald Reagan did this. Ronald Reagan, and not even Reagan. Ronald Reagan is administration did this. <laughs> this is fact. Here in California, closed Ronald all the Reagan. mental institutions. Did I tell you that earlier about my yes, mom? Yes, you did. Yeah. Uh, and I'm restating it because you wanted me to recap. Yeah, tell, exactly. Tell, tell them again because that was some real, that was a real story. Okay. Uh, my mother worked in one of the this mental hospitals, uh, the state hospitals, uh, at the time when uh, Ronald Reagan decided that, you know, to be compassionate for the mentally ill, they're not going to hold them against their will anymore. So what they're going to do is uh, close down all of the mental hospitals uh, because it's just not compassionate to hold people against their will. So my mother, uh, towards the end, working there at uh, the Camarillo State Hospital, uh, her job towards the end was to teach these people how to brush their teeth and wipe their ass. Yes, because it's comp it's, it's more compassionate. It's more compassionate to leave them out to die, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 that's what it is. We were living in back in the 18th century. It's fucked up, isn't it? We got debtors' prisons now. I mean, honestly, I feel like if I can go to jail for not paying a jaywalking ticket, I'm a debtors' prison. That's that's because I owe them money. I didn't do anything. I didn't hurt nobody. You can go to jail for not paying a ticket? Yeah, you can go to jail what if I, a warrant for not showing up at court. failure to appear, and by failure to appear, you're equitably, equitably liable for... What if, like, I didn't pay my registration and they, they put a ticket? There, I won't go to jail? No, 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 no. If you didn't pay your registration, uh -huh. they have to give you a fix a ticket or a citation. Okay. If you don't fix your registration and uh -huh. prove that you fixed it and you paid the 30 buck administration fee, you'll get a failure to appear. Failure to appear is $350, so you now have a $350 warrant out for your arrest. No, it's not a ticket. Warrant. Really? Like the police could take you. 
Wow. And then That's if interesting. they take you $350 is, I think, two days. What I'm saying is, yeah. two days. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Like, oh, okay, you gave us two days in jail. That was worth $350. What the fuck good does that do? You know, it gets them paid. But then, that's what I mean, concentration camps. They're more paid for corporate concentration camps. They, I mean, you contract out, private companies contract out labor from prison for $2 a day. That's slave labor. So are, are some of the jails dollars. and prisons uh, private now, aren't they? Most of them are. And you know what's funny? Is the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest private prison provider in the country has, has not really any relation to this CCA, but it's called CCA. CCA is the name of the prison? Yeah, it's uh, Correctional Centers and some, some shit like that. But it's the biggest private prison contractor. Look, a prisoner in Gen Pop in California nets you, what, 37000 something like that. Okay. If you hold a prisoner in solitary confinement, which prolonged solitary confinement is defined by the United Nations as torture. If you hold a prisoner in prolonged solitary confinement, as in you just hold a prisoner in solitary confinement for the whole year, you get 57000 Oh, and not only that, they go crazy. Because yeah. humans need contact. Yeah. So if you hold a human inside solitary confinement for more than say about a month, they go crazy. So David, how many of our how many of our solitary shoes are full in California? All of them. Okay, so what kind of is logically not following for me is that they get paid more to keep them in solitary, but yes, because does technically it requires more resources to lock somebody in a room with no windows. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, that's not logically following well, in my brain to yes, not have a window well, cost more money. The facility's more secure. The facility has exactly, more surveillance. Like, like, there are five cops on a block instead of uh, two. It's like the yeah. Safer Cities Initiative. Look, you got 50 extra cops. Square block is a 50 square mile radius. I mean, 50 square block radius. You can put a cop on every corner. There should be no drugs or crime in Skid Row. I mean, of course, the police are solid. High opinionated. Let's All see. What's happening? Yeah, that's why. I like yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it's it's fun. Not only that, our uh, death row shoes are almost full. We have uh, some of the like 150 uh, prisoners on death row. Yes. Yes. Uh, it was I, an I, interesting I don't act. agree with capital punishment. Uh, I also don't agree with El Wild. With what? Uh, uh huh. I also believe we're the only country. How, how did it go? Modern country. For the only we, modern country we have, to hold somebody we, we, in prison until they die. Just like the women do. There's and not give them the opportunity for the world. Only industrialized modern country. Hey, that'd be beautiful. I mean, like, in Sweden, the max sentence they arrested the people. Sweden, it's 25 years. Um, a quarter of the year. They completely violated. And they actually have programs in their prison institutions that actually help you become a better person. Yeah, well, um. Now, granted, we have them here too, but they're underfunded. They're underfunded immensely. I mean, because you can, you know, go get your GED in prison if you spend a long time in prison. You can study college in prison, etc. But they only have uh, space for like 20 students a year. We have the highest prison population in the world. So, you know, all these rehabilitation programs, that's what prison's supposed to be, is to really rehabilitate somebody to show them where they went wrong, give them the skills and the education in order to do better. And yet, we use it as just another way. Well, what it is, is it's making money off the poor. Because the majority, if not all, the people in prison are poor. Because they couldn't afford the best lawyers. You have very few, you know, very rare cases where you have, you know, one percenters in jail. Uh, Madoff is an example of, you know, somebody needed to be made an example of. Um, Madoff had a Ponzi scheme, so they dumped Madoff in detail. You know, I learned, um, on, um, when we went, uh, Stevens Raymond, I was there for that. There was about 25 people there for Stevens Raymond. I learned uh, a lot about um, about the uh, the jail system and who gets arrested and who doesn't get arrested. I was in there um, for for an hour, at least four hours, maybe longer, and I sitting there waiting for Steven to come for his arraignment and. Um, so I watched the people who, there was that little cage where they bring the people in. So I watched all the people who they brought in. And uh, I'd say about 75 to 90% of the people who came in were black men. Not only were they black men, they were dark. Uh, maybe 10% of them were uh, Latino men. And then uh, there was uh, two white guys and maybe two women. And they were not white women, I don't remember. Uh, what race they were, but 
but I mean, just, you know, I, I'm sure I read about that in a book somewhere, but it's not the same to read about it than to sit there and just watch it happen. But isn't it cheaper in the long run? By an outlet, this guy way up here that controls the system or has direct, you know, the direct umbilical cash flow of the system doesn't see that money. It's losing money by putting it into the community. However, if he takes the community and puts it in prison, he makes money. So instead of you know, addressing the systemic problems in, in neighborhoods, uh, by putting in community centers, by putting in health, uh, you know, health clinics, or by addressing our fucking education problem in this state slash country, uh, all they're doing is creating another system that continues to feed the PIC. And it's by no fault of Tell the people watching what the PIC is. Uh, prison, prison Industrial Complex. Okay. I, th I think I knew that, but I can't assume everybody knows everything. I don't know what the hell that was. It sounded like a cat bird. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's just, it's just one way to make money up for people. That's how they do it. Alex came down well. I'm just, he's not feeling well. There's one around around the corner here. There's um Leo. There's a Martha's kitchen right there. On the, oh, it's closed. Oh. I know, and I'm all comfortable on the sidewalk now. There's the white wall. You just what? You gotta go down the street and do some knowledge of man. You could feel some, yeah. Or you know what? Wait, is it too late for him to go to the mall over there? No. You're a lifesaver. I'm just wondering, like, fuck, where can I take the police? Oh, there you go. There's a mall. Oh, by City Hall? It closes out at 5. Oh, wow. Thanks that little Buddhist temple. All the way around. You can always use the pod by Persian Square. That. Oh, I used those bathrooms. That was, uh, it wasn't as bad as Central Park. Yeah. And uh while I was I don't think it's twenty minutes, but I'm not. I'm not I was waiting, um...
they just stand in line just to see what's going on. It's like green mm -hmm. Is it really against a lot of SID? But it's not against a lot of squat. Oh, okay. You see that sign right over there? Go read that. Um, that's, that's right there, too. And over there. Hey now. Johnny. <laughs> I'm gonna steal somebody's chair here. <laughs> I was laying anyway. I'm stealing somebody's chair. Rush. Oh, somebody left their phone. Hey, what's going on? Do you wanna um, do you wanna give a, a update? Come on, talk to my talk to my people. Nothing going on. There's nothing going on at this point. What do you think? Old? Do you think the cops will come back? Fuck. Do you think they'll come back or? Of course they'll come back. Will they come back today or tomorrow? Oh, my screen's white. I need to. I'm gonna drop out and come back. I don't know what happened.